Hello, welcome to this week's Realism Tips. This is a bit different than what we normally do, as we are going to be actually taking to the game itself to put some tips into action. I am definitely not very comfortable with speaking into a microphone, so please do forgive me for that. But I'll try to impart some wisdom using my Megalania that I've got here today. He's still a little baby, but that's okay. That can help us encourage them different behaviors. So with kids, it can be very different behaviors sometimes between them and their adult forms. Kids can either be more timid, depending on their species, or more bold. Megalania tend to be a bit more on the bold side, especially in groups, but I'm here by myself today. So if anything, I'd be more inclined to be a bit more timid and be a bit more likely to try and stay out of the way. So here I hear something happening up ahead. As a carnivore, I'm going to be more inclined to approach warily on the off chance that it's something getting hurt and that's something I could therefore take advantage of, especially since I'm getting a bit hungry myself. I don't necessarily see anybody getting hurt, so I'm going to try and avoid that danger as best as I can. So I'm going to try and get out of here myself. So as the little Megalania, there's a few different ways I can interact with the world. I can do so by sniffing with a little R special. It allows me to use a tongue flick at any point in time. That can allow me to scent a general direction to decide if I want to go there, or to scent specific objects that I might think of as food, whether they are in actuality or not. And I can also investigate whether if I do find a food source, if that food source is good by using that tongue flick. There's also other emotes that you can use, such as looking around to help you investigate the wider world. So by looking around on a dinosaur like this and having that rearing up ability, it allows you to get a few different advantages. So the first is going to be the obvious advantage of looking much bigger than you actually are. You can use this to help try and intimidate away predators, rivals, anything of that nature. It also has a tactical advantage of the perspective. Instead of being so low to the ground, your dinosaur gets a chance to get up and be able to see over some of those obstacles that might otherwise be in its way. And there's also some interactions that you can do with it, such if, if I were to come up to this tree and press it, it can look like I'm trying to get at something in the tree or interact with the tree in other ways. Megalania actually use this ability to court with one another and to court uh, rival male against rival male. So you can actually practice that with others of your kind, especially if you're young like this one, in order to gain that ability for when you're older. If you're alone like I am, you can always practice against something like a tree just to help give yourself that little bit of an edge as you grow older. Some specific tips, so while Megalania are not actually semi-aquatic, they do tend to spend most of their time in marshland areas, and they can use the water to their advantage. As they are still excellent swimmers, they can use the water to as a source of food by fishing, and it can also be helpful for a source of thermoregulation. Megalania especially, as well as other dinosaurs, can uh, require a need for thermoregulation. So for thermoregulation, a dinosaur can sit out on hot rocks, especially during uh, the daylight hours, which is turning into night here now. So you can use the hot rocks that have been baking in the sun all day as a means of warming yourself up. And you can even lay or turn in a specific direction to help enhance that effect. Similarly, once uh, your dinosaur has potentially become hot enough or even overheated, you can also turn to the water as a source of helping to cool down. 
even for, especially for semi-aquatics, but even for non-semi-aquatics, uh, Megalania especially, will uh, prefer to actually be in wetland areas and so can make full use of the water and the hot rocks surrounding it, as well as the cool mud surrounding it as a means of thermoregulation. In addition to being a food source and a way to help cool one down, water can also be a good tool for helping get stuck shed off. So dinosaurs, as they go through shed, will potentially have their skin coming off in rough flakes. This can be very itchy and it can get stuck sometimes. So to help ease the process, you can always soak in the water. And once you have soaked sufficiently, you can then get out of the water and you can go up to a nearby hard object, such as a tree or some rocks. And you can use a shake emote, or you can even just mimic brushing up against it, like I am there, as a means to help get rid of that shed.